is Christina Martini on the mat, here to share with you a practice for those of you um, journeying with cancer. So again, this practice is going to be safe and applicable and appropriate for those that are diagnosed with cancer or surviving cancer. Whether you're not starting on treatment or you've started on treatment or you're post-treatment into recovery or survivorship, um, these practices that we're about to do today are appropriate and will definitely make an improvement to the quality of your life. With all physical activities that you would take and begin that's new to your body, please make sure that you're always consulting with your medical providers, your multidisciplinary team that's involved with your health, and also yourself listening to your body, being really in tune and engaged, not to overdo it for ego and um, just to be safe and to be mindful so that you can continue to celebrate this each day. At any given time that you feel fatigued, tired, or need to rest, I'd like you to learn what's child's pose. There's two ways to do a child's pose. One is to get your knees together if you're able to, and you have no conditions there or limitation, and you're gonna take your gluteus maximus and you're just gonna bring yourself to sit down on it. You can either curl up like a ball and just rest there, if you have a pillow, you can place the pillow in the front there. Um, and I'll demonstrate that. A blanket would be good too. And then you can just hug and drop forward this way. If you have some um, tubing, the leostomy bag, colostomy bag, cortical lines that might get in the way, then you definitely want to try to open your knees apart. And again, opening my knees about past the hip distance, but not beyond the mat width. And I'm gonna come down slowly, slowly, and sit on my heel, or if I'm not sitting on my heel, I'm lifting off. And again, if I have a pillow in front of me, I can drop my nose over the pillow and just melt down here for a child's pose. If at any given time you are done with that, and there's those two won't do for you, then you would just lay down and relax and take Shavasana. All these are your options and don't feel bad because you showed up and that's all that matters is that you're doing something for a healthier you living with cancer. So let's begin. The sequence that I'm about to share with you today is a short practice that will target a head to toe assessment type of therapy. For those of you uh, with neuropathy, lymphedema, loss of sensations, numbness and tingling, loss of balance, loss of memory, or weak in memory and focus and attention, fatigue, restlessness, insomnia, depression, worries, muscle toning, loss of bone strength, flexibility, and balance. We are going to enter that all today. So here we are. Thank you for joining me and thank you for appreciating um, this, this, this short clip that is all a gift for you and there'll be more to come. So again, sitting at your most comfortable place, if you have to cross your shins and just drop your knee, you can also place a nice pillow or a blanket, if that's too much for you, right there on your knee. You're just gonna come into your seated and you're gonna draw your chin towards your chest. Relax your palms, just leave them open at this time. Relax the shoulders away from the ear and now we're gonna take a breath first. In the practice of yoga, we call this ujjayi breathing. We're gonna do five to 10 rounds. Let's see how we do. You're gonna close your mouth and breathe through your nostril or breathe through the back of the throat. At any time you feel dizzy, nauseated, and you need to open and exhale through the mouth, you may do so. Please do not hold your breath in if any of those conditions starts to appear, okay? Open your eyes if you do get dizzy or start to feel like you're going to faint. Stop practice and take rest and then you can resume again. It's just going to take time for the body to acclimate and adjust. Thank you. Bringing your hands to the top of your knees. Listen to my breathing. Inhale. Exhale. Filling in the belly and the lungs. Inhale. Exhale. 
Inhale again. You can gaze to the tip of your nose if you need to keep your eyes open. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. One more inhale. Beautiful rest of breath. Drop the jaw down towards the chin and chest. Pulling is going to be felt because it's stretching the cervical spine, so just let it rag go. Don't be afraid of it. Just let it be. This is the only way for the tension and the stressors around the shoulders and the neck to be freed. And so therefore, just relax the chin towards the chest. Arch and round or around your back just a little bit, just to feel, to feel that rest there. Now we're going to inhale, we're going to lift the chin and hold your knees a little bit and extend the chin, the jaw all the way up. Don't pick up the shoulders to the ears, relax the shoulders. Again, chin down, round the spine like cat and cow. And then extend, inhale, open the lungs, chin, chest, gaze up. Exhale, again, chin down, around the back as much as you can. Inhale, extend and open the awakened spine, put our air away. Exhale, again, round. Inhale. Last round, exhale. Inhale. And natural position. Beautiful job. We're going to tip the neck just slightly towards the right shoulder. You're going to leave your left hand on your thighs. And you're just going to slowly take your right hand, place it on your temporal lobe to the side, and you're going to just stretch it a little bit. Please don't do it too fast. You might hear a little crack. That's okay. Don't panic. And then now stay centered. Dip to the left with the neck. And again, left hand, just a little bit. And again, don't over pull, just a little bit of a pressure to extend and release the tension and any stiffness and tightness. Center, relax the neck, let's follow the breathing. Exhale to center. Inhale. Exhale to center. Inhale to the right. Exhale to center and inhale to the left. Exhale to center. Beautiful job. We're going to do a twist this time if you need to realign your heels, your feet, uh, or however you're sitting. Your right hand is going to go to the back and your left hand is going to go over the right knee and you're going to gaze to your right shoulders. And you want your arms to be flat. So I'm going to sit like this so you can see me. Your right hand's going to be flat here, and your left hand's going to be here, and you're going to twist. One, keep your sternum tall. Two, keep your lungs open. Three, keep the spine twisted. Four, again, don't overdo it. Five, beautiful. And coming to the other side, you want to keep your elbows not bent but also touching the back lung lobes. And again, you're here and you're twisting. One, you can even open up a little bit more. 
two, breathe, three. Every time you deep in, it's on the exhale. Four, and five, beautiful. Now we're gonna take that into momentum and I'm gonna sit back to here and we're gonna go right, center, left. And this will engage to open up your spinal column in addition to opening up the lungs to get some air and good oxygenation in there to let the blood flow, okay? So hands on top, going to the right, inhale. Exhale to the center and then inhale to the left. Exhale, inhale, turn your neck if you can for range of motion, exhale, prepare, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale. Excuse me. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And coming down. So like a video. So oh, sorry for the sneeze. <laughs> so that's one motion. Now we're going to use the arms. Place your left hand to the side of your body. Bring your right hand open palms. Inhale, only to the ability of your range of motion. If this is as far as you can go, look up. If you can bend your elbows to get deeper and deeper and deeper. If you have breast surgery, lung surgery, heart surgery, or anything here that's going on that's very pulling and tight, relax the shoulder down and bend the arms. Please do not overdo it again. We have every day to practice. So every day that you can come back on the mat, is the healing process and the journey, okay? So again, inhale if you have the range of motion, extend and look up, and then exhale, bring that back down to the mat, and open the arms to the left, good. Inhale, little by little, you're learning how to open up to your range of motion, and get a straight arm, and exhale, bringing it back down. This also helps with lymphedema, and any swelling to the axilla and the arms. And again, exhale. Also good for distended belly, cirrhosis, ascites. This will help stretch the fluid and excrete them naturally to away from the body, away from the heart, so it doesn't connect to shortness of breath and cardiovascular problems. And again, just release. So we're going to do that again in momentum, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. One more, inhale, look up, and exhale, beautiful. We're going to bring two arms up, inhale, palms together, bend elbows or straight arms, exhale, interlace your hands behind your back and pull away from it and head up and bow down a little bit to the best that you can, lift up the arms and come back to the top. Beautiful. Let go of the arms, inhale, hands up. Interlace the hands, palms facing up. Exhale the hands behind the back. Again, open up your scapula, your shoulder girdles, your blades. If you can only fold a little bit, fold what you can do. And then again, come back, inhale. Exhale, release the hands. Inhale up and exhale, release. One more set. Inhale, palms up. Exhale, interlace the hands and look up. And again, let it go, bring it to your back. Interlace the hands and open up the shoulder girdle. Exhale, fold down. 
Inhale, come up. Let go of the hands. Exhale, inhale up. And breathe. Beautiful practice. We're going to get off the, the bent knees so that we can extend the leg out. And now we're going to work on neuropathy, numbness, and tingling, and also blood circulation. So leave your feet out. If you're sitting in the chair, then extend your leg. If you're already on the floor or where you have a space to move your legs out, wonderful. Okay, so just sitting here for a moment. Bringing your hands shoulder width, good. Keep your heels flexed and not splayed, so right here. We're gonna use our hands first. We're gonna flip and strong, brisk lift. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale, sit tall, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, last one, inhale, exhale, and release, round out your ribs, relax your shoulder, and drop it down to the floor. You can do five rounds or 10 rounds. One inhale and exhale is one round. So you wanna repeat five sets or 10 sets, okay? This time we're gonna use the fist and flip up, inhale, exhale, inhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, last two, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. And again, relax the shoulder. You can roll it if it's a lot of tension there and counterclockwise also relax your shoulder. Beautiful. Now we're going to use the fingers. We're going to just Put the hands in the front, and again, extend the fingertips as wide as you can, and then create a fist. Spread the fingers wide, activate, create the fist. Spread the fingers wide, activate, create the fist. Really make a fist, put a pound each in your arm. Extend the fingertips with weight, gripping, feeling, and then close it out to a fist. A nice fist. Extend it out one more set and close the fist. Extend it out and close the fist. Beautiful. Shake it off gently. Shake it off and sitting. And that helps gain some strength of gripping sensations. You can even do it when you're on the floor. You could pull paper and just practicing like the squeeze ball action, just like that, the stress balls that we have. We're gonna focus on the feet now, okay? So the feet, pointer is plantar flex, inhale, exhale, dorsiflex. You're gonna feel your calves and your hamstrings maybe catching a charley horse. Don't panic, the more you breathe, it will go away, and that's why we're doing this, okay? This is now the loss of um, nerve endings or nerve ending feelings and sensations um, to the feet. People are getting pins and needles, right? Those little tingling feelings, this will help you with blood circulation. So sit tall, point the toe, inhale, make sure you breathe, exhale, dorsiflex, plantar flex, inhale, Dorsiflex, exhale. Plantar flex, inhale. Dorsiflex, exhale. One more inhale. And exhale. Relax your feet, round in your spine a little bit and fold a little bit over just to release any pressure, tightness, stiffness, pain, pinching into the body. Coming up again, this time, we're gonna pick up the heel, 
Inhale, you can hold your thighs on your knees, point the toe, and plantar flaps. Point the toe, and plantar flaps. Point the toe, sorry, dorsiflaps. Planters pointed, like a dancer's toe, flex the toe to dorsiflaps. It's what we check in Holman signs when we check your blood circulation to your leg for blood clots. Pointed and exhale, dorsiflaps. Pointed and exhale, release it down. Five sets on the left side. You can lean back a little bit. You can also do this sitting against a chair and sitting against the bed or sitting against the wall. So it's safe for you to practice this wherever you are. And you can also put a pillow underneath your sacrum or your coccyx or your tailbone if it's too much for you on the floor. You can also dip back, okay? So we're lifting it, carrying the calves or the thighs under. Those of you that are strong, you can have your hands to your side. Start with dorsiflex on both toes, both feet. Plantar flex only on the left. Keep the other one engaged. Dorsiflex. Point the toe, it's going to burn. Flex the feet, point the toe. Flex the heel up, point the toe. And again, flex the heel, point the toe. Suck into your belly, inhale, exhale, and drop it down. Ooh, you feel that? It's on your thigh muscles and your pelvis. It's very engaged, it's going to burn. It's a good thing when you get up from here and you feel like, ooh, I feel it. That is a good sign. There's a saying, yoga begins at the discomfort zone. And from the discomfort zone, when you go beyond the threshold, the process of the practice takes you to where healing begins. So don't give up, stick to it, because that's very important. We're gonna stand up now. So again, be safe to stand up. Yay, awesome. I'm gonna move my mat back a little bit so you could see me. We're gonna do a few practice now of movement with the body from the top. And at any given time, you can always, again, take your child's pose and come down. So coming to the top of the mat, I'm gonna move this back just a little so you can see, good. Um, your feet can be together, your feet can be apart, and we're almost done. We're going to go into a flow, and then we're going to come down to seated and open up our hips and our back and our blood circulation there. And then we're going to end the class with a meditation. So inhale, bringing your hands up. And what you can do is anything that you can bend your back. Exhale, just folding round or however you can fold. Inhale, lift up your spine. Exhale, interlace your elbows and just red dog and fold. Inhale, you're gonna round up coming back up and bringing your hands up to the top and palms together if you can, suck into your belly. If this is too much for you, you can bend your elbows and exhale, straight arms to your side. So you wanna maintain a straight arm so that energy and oxygen can flow equally to the center line of the chakras, the healing part of the body, where all the diseases can be processed with breath, okay? Inhale, hands up, head back or head natural. Exhale, you can open your feet apart, touch your shins and just bow down. If you can expand and extend your spine, you want to be level here. But if that's too much for you, you can arch and round your back a little bit, okay? Exhale, kind of fold down just a little bit more, and head right off. No tension to the neck. You don't need to look up or look around, just meditate. And hey, you're feeling your sacrum, your vertebrae, your whole spinal column here getting flow of oxygen and blood correctly. The osmosis the exchange. Inhale, rise up, bring your hands open and hands back to the top. And exhale, hands back to your side. Beautiful. Let's do it again. Follow the breathing. 
Inhale, hands up, together with the palms. Exhale to go to your shins, round in. Inhale, stretch your arms, stretch your spine, and keep it nice and long. Exhale, sink a little lower and round your back, and hang it forward. Inhale, open up your arms like wings and come up gently. Don't lose your balance. Unlock your knees. And exhale, back to your side body. Good. One more. Inhale, hands up. Exhale to the shins. Inhale, elongate your spine. Exhale, ragdoll and fold. You can bend your knees. Inhale, look up and open up your arms and come up gently. Don't get dizzy by going up too fast. And exhale, keep your eyes open to the side. Beautiful. We're going to do three chair pose. Keep your knees apart. Touch your hands on top of your thighs and squat to your hips. And hands in the front, inhale, fold it down, exhale, stretch your spine, inhale, step your left feet back and take your right feet forward, any lunge is good, and hands up, palms separated or palms together, or hands to your thighs and just lunge. Inhale, release that leg, take it to the other side, and make sure the back heel is drawn down. Any way that you can get into a lunge here with your thighs engaged or your hands above, the palms together. And then exhale, step back to the center of the mat and ragdoll, fold down, exhale. Inhale, lengthen your spine carefully and open up your chair pose one more time with your hands in front and exhale to standing. Good. Let's do two more. And again, this will strengthen out your knee bone for osteoporosis, for knee bone strength, for hip bones, um, arms, everything. So remember when we're in chemotherapy or when we're malnourished and the uh, the cancer cells and the intracellular cells of the body, the cellular cells, um, they need to gain mobility, they need to gain strength internally and externally. Although it's challenging, it's doing its thing on the inside, so just be patient, okay? So don't quit on yourself. We're gonna do two sets in continual motion, okay? Hip distance apart, squat, Inhale, bring your hands up to chair. Good. You can even drop it down. Exhale, touch your shins, fold down. Inhale, your spine, head up. Exhale, prepare to lunge to warrior with the right feet. Prepare your hands on top of your thighs for steadiness so you don't fall. Those of you that can do it, hands up, look up. Exhale back and touch your thighs and shift the leg, plant it with your breath. And again, lunge the knee, inhale, hands up. Exhale, coming back to the top of your mat, look up. And fold all the way to right bell down. Bend your knees first, prepare your hands in the front. And exhale to standing. Beautiful. Let's do the last set. And again, inhale, squat into a chair, hands up, shoulders relax. Exhale, fold down. Either you can strengthen your knees or keep it bent. Inhale, head up, spine long. Exhale, step the left feet back, lunge the right toe. Right knee, hands up. Exhale, lunge to the left, step the right back, 
And again, deep lunge. And exhale, both together and right dog down on the exhale. Inhale, squat. You could stay here or challenge yourself. And then exhale, release. Beautiful. Open to your right. Point your toes to the right, about three and a half to four feet. And hold your lower back and just be here. If you have a book or a block at home, I'm going to show you how to use the block. You're going to place the block behind your feet here. And you're going to stand the block this way or this way or flat, depending on your reach. So I'm going to place it here. I'm going to grip it always with my hands facing the same direction as the feet. And opening up your spine. One. Two. Take the next challenge. Three. Your hands are going to go up to the top. Four. You're going to suck your belly in. Five. Gaze down when you're coming up, especially if you're in therapy and treatment and come up. Turn your body gently, don't ever move fast. Bend your knees if you have to, move the block. Parallel the block to your toes. Hands also parallel to the feet. Hold your lower back on your right side. If you have no neck injury, gaze to your right shoulder. Other than that, remain neutral and be happy with where you are. And again, breathe. One. Look up. Two, smile, <laughs> breathe, three, four, and five. Gaze down, and then again, careful to come up. This time we're gonna lunge the right knee. So again, you're gonna open up more space between the right heel and the left, this time about four to five feet. Lunge the right knee, this is all you can do, place your right forearm on your top of your thighs and hold your lower back or don't let your arms touch your face. Give some space, reach over, and you can always put it in the front. You don't always have to put it behind here. Listen to your arms, okay? Those of you with a bigger, deeper practice, you can take the block again and you can hold the block and lunge deeper and you can take your hands to lunge deeper this way, okay? So you have many options. Option here or option here. Try breathing. One, two, three, four, and five. Inhale, gaze down, coming up. Same thing, you wanna change which way you're going to do, either you're going to come in here and just reach over and enjoy that, and oblique stretch, you're going to learn to stretch a little obliques. Staying here, one, continue, two, and those of you in the block, you know what to do, deep lunge, three, four, and five. Beautiful and careful to come up. Hold your hands and your hips and be still. Our last part before we come down to the floor is going to be goddess and warriors. So be mindful, open, keep your feet where you were. We're going to crunch down, and so we're going to bend the knees and inhale, come up. Exhale, come down. Inhale, come up. Make sure your feet doesn't splay out like a duck feet. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale again. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Now, if you have the arm range of motion, open up like the wings. Ready? Inhale. Exhale, inhale, exhale. Squeeze 
like an eagle's arm. This reduces edema and lymphedema. Inhale, exhale. Come up, inhale. Come down, exhale. Come up, inhale. Come down, exhale. Come up, inhale. And exhale. Warrior arms. One, two, three, three, four, and five. Beautiful job. The last standing balance. Come back to the front or two feet together. Left hand to your hips. And when you pick up the knee, you can use two hands and stay steady. Just here. One, point the toe down. Two, pick up your knee about hip height. Three, stand tall of your chest. So you're going to wobble. It's okay to wobble and fall. Just keep trying. If you need to use the wall, I would go to the wall and hold the feet. One, and just try your best. Two, three, later on you can hold one knee and left hand. Four, five, you're just gonna open. One, stay tall. Two, stay balanced. Three, this is good for you in case you only have one good leg or good strength on one side. This will help you prevent hurting yourself when you're falling. This is where balance comes in. And bring it back. Point the toe. One, two, three, four, five. Beautiful. Next time we do that a little longer, you're going to feel your gluteus maximus muscles really engage and a workout. <laughs> so left side, catch your toe. You're doing amazing. One, two hands if you need to go to the wall. Two, breathing. Don't quit. Three, four, five. Open up. One, two, gaze to the center, or some of you can gaze to the side, opposite side. Three, four, five. Coming back to the center, and again, let go of the leg. One, some of you will be low, some of you will be high. Two, just stay with it. Three, four, and five. Beautiful. We're going to vinyasa to the floor and come to seated and open up the final back and hip and shoulders and then end our class. So to vinyasa to the floor, you're going to go ahead and just bring your right hand, left hand to the center and then kind of come to sit down and find your glutes, turn to your side and get them on the floor. Beautiful. We're going to lay down first, full flat back. And some of you will be able to grab your ankle, and maybe some cannot grab your ankle. Okay, so you can grab the ankle, wonderful. If you're not able to grab the ankle, that's okay. So I'm going to come in here so that you can see it closer. Moving with here, and I'm going to lift up my pants. So again, I'm either grabbing my ankle here. Okay, you might need to put a blanket over your back or your neck. If that's the case, you can do it that way or you can roll it underneath your neck, whatever helps your shoulders, okay? So just stay in here. First set, if you can't grab your ankle, grab the outside of your mat. So you're having two hands outside. The other option is to interlace your hands underneath your, behind your butts, <laughs> your gluteus maximus. Lift up your pelvis, and this is some of you will be here. Don't take your chin out of closing, getting closer to your neck. You want your chin to stay close to your chest so that you're looking, gazing into your navel or your third eye drishti or your temple or your nose. Lift up the belly. One, you can do it. Two, you can do it. Three, four, five. Relax without coming all the way down. Inhale, come back up. One, two, 
three, four, five. Exhale, come back down. Inhale, come back up. One, two, three, four, five. Exhale, come back down and relax. If you are by the wall, you're just going to let your feet go and let your heels come together and just lay in a straight flat line. Keep your stomach engaged. We're going to pick up one leg and just try to bend and see if you can fold over. You can let that go. Pick up the other leg straight if you can. Some people can fold with that or bend the knees and hold, fold. Lay down first. Take both knees and curl to it. One, two, point your toes down, three, four, and five, and relax. Good. You can take it to shoulder stance, and this will be your inversion today. So if you can't lift the back off the, the mat or the floor, don't worry about it. Just be 90 degrees. Keep your back on the floor and right there, point the toes up. Breathing, one. Two, this is an inversion. This is flowing the blood. Those of you that can lift up a little bit, you would hold your tailbone or your butt and kind of lift up a little bit here and create that there. Three, four, don't do this when you have a menstrual, um, your cycle, I mean, and five. Come down gently, gently, holding the mat and rolling, don't slam your vertebrae and don't lose the energy. X your shins and just lay down the knee. If you can arch and get on your shoulder blades, you can create a little arch on your spine. Some of you with no neck issues, you can create the head. Okay, so we're all at different levels of practice. Just stay grounded for now and breathe. Let it be. Keep your hands on top and create a butterfly. Good. And now we're going to sit up, and I'm just going to show you our final closing. Open out your feet, and just create Baddha Konasana, that's the butterfly pose. And don't overdo it, just open up the feet, put the heels more out, and just enjoy rounding the back and folding down. Your right elbow and left elbow should be pressing the hip down and the thighs down, but that's hard to do. So right now, just be happy with where you are. And slowly, bringing the feet together and next, and going back to breathing. Hands on top of your knees. We made it to the end of the practice. Inhale. Exhale. In. Exhale. In. Last one. Oh. Beautiful. Shavasana means to lay down and open your feet apart. And if you'd like to 
sit into meditation for a few more moments, you may do so. Um, those of you with needs to rest, definitely have a beautiful practice throughout your journey. Don't give up. Keep your faith, keep your trust, keep your hope, because we can beat anything. <laughs> oh. Thank you.